everybody. This is Rhonda Whitehurst and Terry Sternberg. We're from the Fine Arts Center for the New River Valley. And our February 2nd Saturday Art Cafe for children is called Hearts of Fire. And today, Miss Rhonda is going to show you all how we're going to do a watercolor project uh, along this theme of hearts, because it is Valentine's Day soon. And uh, she's going to tell you all about the artist that's the inspiration for our project with you. And we hope you get a really uh, big kick out of what you're going to learn and what you're going to do this month. So let me turn it over to Miss Rhonda. Hi guys. Today we're going to uh, learn about Paul Klee. He is a uh, German born artist and here is uh, some samples of his most famous work. Mm -hmm. This is the head of man one of my favorites. And this one up here, most of the kids like, it's cat and bird. Mm. And you have to kind of study it to find that bird, but he's actually between the eyes. Klee was known for his cubism and surrealism and expressionism. And he actually invented his own art form by combining those particular forms of art that is now called Expression Abstract. I can see that, Miss Rhonda. I can see on the head of a man that you're holding up. Uh, it's not a uh, realistic looking picture of a man as if you were like a, a realism artist. The abstract is... Uh, where the eyes are a little bit different and all, and the shape of the cubes, but it does express a lot. And so even with blocks and round shapes and all that you can see in here, um, you do get a feel for emotion or expression in the cat and the bird. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Well, <clears throat> Klee had difficulty to begin with with color. And in the early 1900s, he went to Africa and the light, the, Northern Africa actually, and the light there was extremely intense. And it made colors glow. And after that, he decided he would no longer have difficulty with colors. As a matter of fact, he said, in some of his writings later, color has taken possession of me. No longer do I have to chase after it. Color and I are one. I am a painter. And he was a painter. He produced over 9,000 pieces of art in his lifetime. So today we're going to celebrate his art, uh, and this is my interpretation. I see your heart. Well, we put the heart in because of Valentine's Day, and we're going to love this project. Mm -hmm. uh, you should have in your kit some watercolors, a piece of watercolor paper, a small piece of paper that you will use to, you can draw out a design and then later on you can flip it over and we will use it when we're mixing paint to make sure we have the color we want. You'll need a, a cup of water and inside your watercolors there will be your watercolors and a brush and you should also have a foam brush. The foam brush we will use the most. Now we're going to start by dipping our brush, our foam brush, in water. You do not have to soak it in it. It does not have to be sobbing wet. It should not be dripping. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of paper, our watercolor paper, and we're going to wet it. 
Now you do not have to wet it all from edge to edge. You just want to do long strokes with your center in the center. And then we're going to start with whatever color we want to use as a background. And I would recommend doing a lighter color to begin with. And then you're just going to kind of brush it over. And you'll notice that when I did, when I carried it through the color yellow, then I kind of moved it over here. And this part of your watercolors will actually be where you're going to mix your colors. Now, for this part, you do not need it to be exact. And it's okay. You kind of want some dark and light in it. It can be streaked. And so... We don't want our piece to look flat. So now what we could do is bring in a little bit of different colors. And with your foam brush, just kind of keep it up straight, pointing up, and just kind of throw in some little so that gives it some shading so it gives it a little depth and if you don't like it you can just if it seems too harsh you can just put some more yellow in it and see it's going to have a nice blend but it's still going to be there now, you're going to use your water, uh, your paper towel to blot your and clean, kind of dry your brush a little before you go into a different color. Another thing with watercolor is sometimes you want to have it dry, and you can do that by kind of fanning it, fanning it around. Um, I'm going to start with the heart, but you can actually start with anything. Now, you can take a pencil and lightly draw your heart, or you can just do it freehanded. And see, this is going to need less water. Okay, that kind of looks like a heart. If yours doesn't, that's okay. This is uh, abstract. And now for your cubes and um, triangles and circles, um, it's really simple to do with this brush because everything will be kind of uh, according to the width of the brush. So I'm going to make sure my red's off. Let's try some blue. Now your paper over here, you see, you can use it as a test to see if it's dark enough. If you need it darker, don't use the water, just use straight from the, uh, the pan. These are called pans or cakes. All right, let's see. Here's a cube. Now, if I want this darker, 
I would let it dry just a few minutes. And the way to tell whether your watercolor is dry or not, you just hold it up. And if it's shiny, then it's still wet. But I think I can still go on top of it a little. And that's going to make it darker. Now, you can do it in different places. And color in art should be used more than once. So like if you use blue down below, you want to use it at least a you second time? You want to use it at least a second time. Okay. That's good to know. Now to do a circle, what I'll do is like a, I just twist it around. And there you have your circle. When that's a little drier, or once your sponge is a little drier, you can go right on top of it. And if you want detail, you can actually use your little brush and some dry paint and you can actually use it as your detail. Now with art, to give it depth, you have to give yourself, even with abstract art, a light source. So you have to determine if this was real, if these were real objects, where would the light be coming from? And um, so if the light was coming this way, then this side would be darker because it would be in the shade. And you can do fun things with it. This is your piece. There's no wrong or right. So make it your own. This is your interpretation. Now to do a triangle. What I do when I do a triangle is I use the very tip and I do it like I'm drawing. And then I just fill it in. See? That's easy. Mm -hmm. Now, guys, if you want it to run and be real loose, like this one, this piece was done with a lot of water. And the more water you have, the more it's going to run and blend into each other. And that's really cool, isn't it? Miss mm -hmm. Terry mm -hmm. did this one. Didn't she do a great job? Yeah, I think so. And it was a lot of fun, too, wasn't it? It was. So, play with your piece. Make it your own. And if you want, if you want it darker, you just wait until an area dries, and you go back over it with the same color. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys have fun at this. And I want to show you this is Miss Terry's piece. Yep, when I got done painting. But look how much better it looks when you just put a little mat around it. So go to the dollar store, buy you a frame and a mat, 
and frame your piece. Hang it on your wall. Be proud of it. I hope you have fun with this project and we'll see you next month.